What if you're able to see across the room, let's just say you're going grocery shopping, all the way across the store, you can look at the back of a product and see the label. But you can also see just across the aisle and, and pick off some of the fine details that are out in front of you. Maybe some of the pricing of a loaf of bread that you're looking at, a few different options. And her eyes kind of perked up and she said, well, that's an option. That's something I can do in wearing contact lenses successfully. The vast majority of the time I said, absolutely. You have to have confidence that you can get it right in multifocal contacts. Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Ryan Reflects. I'm so happy to be here with you today and it's going to be another solo podcast episode where we are going to dive into fitting and prescribing multifocal contact lenses. I want you to kind of envision your practice and the patients that you serve. And then I want you to really think about who are the key decision makers in your patient base. Oftentimes you will find they tend to be between the ages of 35, 40 years old, up until about 60, 55, 60 years old. They're the patients that thrive when you get it right with fitting and prescribing multifocal contact lenses. And so I'm going to walk you through just coming to some of the strategies that I've utilized to implement this into my practice and, and ways to be successful. But before I do, I just want to take a moment and thank you for being a listener of the podcast. I have now been filming these podcasts and putting them out on Spotify, YouTube, and Apple since the beginning of the year, 2025. And I'm just so grateful that you are taking the time to tune in and listen. So please, if you haven't done so already, make sure you hit that like, that follow, that subscribe button, or even better, share the podcast out with a colleague or friend who could get some value from today's episode or any of the episodes that I've thrown out there thus far. It really does help me continue to grow the audience and the impact that we have within our profession. And my goal is to really continue to help you grow personally and professionally as an optometrist each and every episode. So thank you. That being said, let's take a step back at and think about how are we serving our presbyopes? How can we best serve the eye health and vision care needs of this patient population? Me personally, I can tell you, yeah, glasses are a tool in my toolbox. So are contact lenses. The reality is if a patient has contact lenses, they should also have glasses. Let's really dive into the best possible contact lens solution for these patients. And it's a multifocal contact lens. Don't get me wrong. Monovision is a tool I have in my toolbox. And I, I definitely utilize that strategy and that fitting philosophy for patients that have been in monovision for a long period of time or who really, really want to try contact lenses out. Maybe they've struggled with the current multifocal or multifocal torque solutions that are out there. Absolutely gives patients good distance and good near, but they tend to lose their depth perception over time. And that intermediate zone does tend to struggle. And oh, by the way, they're definitely not purchasing progressive glasses from the clinic. Why? Because, well, progressive glasses aren't designed in a monovision format. But that patient population that comes in and makes the influential decisions for your patient base, I, I tend to think of it as, the, let's just say, the 45 year old female. She has kids, she has colleagues and friends in the community, parents. And oh, by the way, most likely a husband that she'll drag in eventually. And if you get it right with multifocals with these patients, well, you're going to drive in all of those referrals and then some and great positive word of mouth. But in our clinic, I can tell you, we plant the seed about getting patients into contact lenses well before they actually make it into the office through our digital intake form. Obviously, when they call or, or first set up an appointment to reserve one online. But also when they check in and when that patient is getting worked up to see me or another doctor in the practice. And all that being said, if they're presbyope, we open up the conversation around multifocal contact lenses. So I had a patient just this past week, 47-year-old female, and she was sitting in the chair and was hitting a point where she was not thrilled with her distance only contact lenses. And she wanted to talk about options and she, you know 
was a little bit concerned about dropping out of contact lens wear. And so right there in my head, it's the perfect opportunity to have that conversation around multifocal contact lenses. And we have monthly, two-week, and daily disposable multifocal contact lenses as tools in our toolbox. And so for me immediately, I said, what if you're able to see across the room, let's just say you're going grocery shopping, all the way across the store, you can look at the back of a product and see the label, but you can also see just across the aisle and, and pick off some of the fine details that are out in front of you. Maybe some of the pricing of a loaf of bread that you're looking at, a few different options. And her eyes kind of perked up and she said, well, that's an option. That's something I can do in wearing contact lenses successfully. The vast majority of the time I said, absolutely. And so I think the first thing that you really need to be mindful to be successful in multifocal contact lenses is change your mindset if you're not fitting them openly, openly and enthusiastically and recommending them to patients that are viable candidates. You have to have confidence that you can get it right in multifocal contacts. And so this patient in particular, she was, I think, like a plus two in one eye and about a plus 175 in the other, right? I was able to determine her ad. I think she was at about a 175 ad. And I knew, hey, we can get you seeing better than what you're doing right now in your contact lenses. And so what I tell her is, hey, listen, how would you like to have 80, upwards of 95% visual function throughout the day? They're not going to be perfect at all times, right? I don't overpromise because I don't want to under deliver. So I always point out the fact that, hey, it could be a little bit more challenging if you go into a dimly lit restaurant and you're trying to read a menu and all of a sudden they just take the lighting from normal and they drop it all the way down. You're like, oh man, I can't see this as well. And I also don't promise that they're going to be perfect when driving at night at all times or in scenarios where maybe the patient's a little bit overtired. But I let her know, hey, listen, you're going to have very functional vision in these contact lenses. How would you like to give them a try? And of course, the patient, you know, they often ask questions about overall quality of vision. I ask about what are they doing on a day-to-day -day basis. This particular lady was working from home, also had young kiddos. So she wanted versatility, be able to see a screen, be able to go to a ball game, be able to have a date night with her husband. And I addressed all of those concerns. And then I said, okay, let's get you in some daily multifocal contact lenses. And I always jump in. I just did a podcast on this. I jump into dailies whenever possible because it's the best possible solution for our patients' eye health and vision care needs. You get a fresh lens each time. Patients are much more compliant. It's, it's a much more flexible solution. And oh yeah, by the way, they're the most comfortable option out there, especially with the lens designs that are optimized today in the marketplace from the big four manufacturers. So I grab her some contact lenses. And the first thing I did, of course, I started with a fresh refraction, but then I went to the manufacturer's fitting guide and I have a number of them memorized by now, but I still just take a peek and I want to know where am I starting? And if you're fitting multifocals and you haven't had the success that you've been wanting to have, well, start with a fresh refraction. Every single manufacturer's fitting guide advises you to do so. And then take a look at the playbook, right? The instructions. Essentially, go look and see what the manufacturer is recommending based off of all the beta testing and the research and development of that fitting guide based off their particular brand. And I'll tell you, this right here is one of the number one ways that I see patient, our peers, other optometrists, not effectively fit and prescribe multifocal contact lenses. Either A, they're just, they've had bad experiences in the past. B, they don't follow the fitting guide. They don't follow the playbook. They don't start with a fresh refraction or they come in and they're just not overly enthusiastic about it. So when I did this for this patient, I grabbed the lenses, she popped them in her eyes. And just like anything, I actually transitioned to another component of the exam. I'll review OptiMap digital retinal imaging with the patient while we let the lenses settle in. And I kind of gauge from there, how is the patient doing, right? We all have that patient. They put in a multifocal and they're like, wow, everything's blurry. Still blurry, still blurry, still blurry you know, minutes go by and they're just, they're not overall thrilled with how things look. Then I may start looking into immediately making some updates or changes based off the fitting guide, making that next step. If the patient has blurry distance vision, you know, maybe I'll make an adjustment in that dominant eye based off the fitting guide. 
they have blurry near vision, same thing, make an adjustment in that non-dominant eye off the fitting guide. But if that patient is having success, I'll immediately have them look out and with both eyes open, right? It's not a singular situation. It's not a monocular situation. It's a binocular visual assessment. I'll have them look and read the lowest row of letters they can on the smelling chart with both eyes open. And then I'll celebrate it. If they read 2025, great. That's fantastic. 2020, even better. 2015, holy cow, you're crushing it. And then I asked them to get out their phone. And I know a lot of our peers will grab a near chart, a near card. Me personally, I want to know how can you functionally operate up close? I don't even take my phone out for the side for a second here. If the patient comes in and they're holding the phone right on top of their nose, tell them to back it out a little bit, right? It does not make sense for our patients and it doesn't really, no multifocal is going to allow them to have that phone right on top of their nose. We're looking at that 40 to 50-ish centimeter mark. That's really what we're looking at for them to be able to see well in their multifocal context. And sometimes I even like to call it intermediate near at times, depending on the patient and what their expectations are. And I check their vision up close. And then I will also take a look and see what does their phone even look like? And what do I mean by that? What does the display look like? The brightness, the font size, the boldness, the contrast. I tell them, help me help you be successful in seeing your digital devices throughout the day. Don't get me wrong. These lenses are fantastic. But if you have the display, the brightness of your phone all the way down, I can't help you, right? We need to turn that up to at least halfway, if not 75% or more. It just helps, right? If you have font size all the way down to the very, very smallest possible option the phone provides you or your, you know, anything, your laptop, your desktop, help me help you, right? Th those are not realistic expectations for your eyes long-term throughout the day. And so I, I go ahead and I help tweak and adjust those things. And then I also point out, hey, listen, there may be a time where your eyes are just kind of, they've kind of had it throughout the day, or maybe you need to see extra fine printer. Maybe you're struggling to read for long periods of time. It's not against the law. It's perfectly okay to, to throw on a plus one reader over top to help supplement and give you a little bit of extra help. And so having these conversations and really bringing out the fact that good light, good sight, and we can get them seen very, very well, but they need to be mindful that there are certain limitations, realistic limitations, is how I effectively fit and prescribe and get a lot of patients into multifocal contact lenses. And I can tell you, this patient was thrilled. She was able to see her phone. She actually had the display and brightness on a very normal setting. And she was able to get on her phone, look at certain apps, read her email. I will even take, we have an iPad in the room. I'll take it out to like a computer distance, intermediate distance, and let them see what that looks like. And then double check what things look like out in the real world, in the hallway, or in the optical. And then I let the patient know, based off of that visit, hey, like, here's where we're at. I'm going to have you wear them for a number of days. I may even sign off on it right away. Um, but letting them know that if they're unhappy, then they can always come back and we can make adjustments. That's for the patient that's kind of thriving. And that's the vast majority of cases. But let's just say a patient isn't when they pop the lenses in. I determine eye dominancy. I'll grab a plus 250 or higher lens. I'll pop it over one eye while the patient's looking at a 20, 40 or larger letter. Pop it over the other eye. Ask them. Which eye does this bother you more over? Or do you feel like it disrupts that visual signal more when I do so? So if I pop it over their right eye, pop it over their left eye and their right eye, man, it's really driving them nuts. Well, it's most likely that that is their dominant eye, right? We're, we're impeding the visual signal to their dominant eye. That's the blur method. Of course, you can use the, hey, let's just go ahead and have you isolate it with the triangle, isolate a letter. That's kind of my backup if we really can't tell or if I just want a second, second data point. And I'll manipulate and make the adjustments based off the manufacturer fitting guide and adjust accordingly. Some manufacturers will have you adjust the refraction right away. Some manufacturers will have you go ahead and, and adjust ad powers. Some is it's a combination. But the reality is I'll make those adjustments same day especially if the patient's struggling right, right away. If they're still struggling, then I may even consider popping them into a different multifocal contact lens solution. And oh, by the way, if they're struggling, I will pop out of the room. I'll jump into the next room. I'll start seeing the next patient. I'm giving their brain time to catch up with what's going on after I make an adjustment.
because we all know it's not instant gratification. It's not like you just pop these things on and wow, the world is perfect. Everything is just crystal clear and I'm just a 10 out of 10 and beyond happy. Don't get me wrong. We have those patients that adapt really quickly, but there are also patients that take some time, just like a progressive pair of glasses. And so when I make some of these adjustments, I'll do it in the one room or if I only have one room, pop out in the waiting room, let them adapt and then bring them back in. Maybe the optical is another good solution, right? Give them some time to look at glasses. And so, of course, I'm always evaluating the lens on the eye, making sure that it successfully fits the patient's eyes appropriately, that there's good centration movement, the patient's happy with the overall comfort the vision, getting the vision dialed in, making sure I put them in the best possible solution that is optimized for lens wear, not only when they first put in that contact lens, but when they are reaching the middle and even end of the day and they still need to get more things done and they want to wear their contact lenses to do so. I will make sure that not only the fit and the vision, all the stars align on that front. And then I'm working with the best possible tools in our toolbox. And we have some really, really strong options when it comes to multifocals for our patients nowadays. And also, I do want to point out, I, it doesn't surprise me at times if I see these patients coming back and they want to continue to try to refine or improve and make the appropriate adjustments to do so. In fact, I encourage it because I want them to get it dialed in. Remember, when you get it right with these patients, you're satisfying their eye health and vision care needs. You're taking care of patient number one, but you're also going to drive so many more people into the practice. Because not everybody's fitting and prescribing multifocals with confidence and with success. And I know you can do so. That's it for today's podcast. If you have any tips on how you're fitting multifocals successfully or just your fitting philosophy for patients that are presbyopic and wear contact lenses, definitely drop them in the comments below. And stay tuned for my next podcast where we can reflect and grow stronger together.